guess who's been glam camping out on the east side for the past couple of days? Yes, my fabulous Phalaenopsis, and fabulous is spelt with a PH in my case. <laughs> Thank you for clicking on this video. I thought this was an opportune time to give an update on my complex hybrid Phalaenopsis collection. Seeing as now is the time that they're outside for the most part, We've had some super overcast days, but they've been warm enough. Also, the nights still have been warm enough, so that has been their location. But I still had to keep an eye on it because overcast here can mean two things <laughs> this time of year. And the forecast can't be relied on. What I'm doing is giving them as much light as possible before they are back in the confines of their shelves where they will not get any light, nor will they get supported by any artificial lighting. So they're getting some extra TLC prior to the stresses ahead. Let's start with... Phalaenopsis no ID, but named Ninja Yellow from the Orchid Room. She tried to bloom for me. All the conditions were adverse, so her buds blasted. Never mind, the orchid is doing well, and that is the most important thing. It's probably a reoccurring theme throughout this entire video. If they didn't bloom, if the buds blasted, it is because the conditions were adverse. I'm going to try and not keep repeating myself. But she is doing well. Another reoccurring theme. Spoiler alert. They're doing well. <laughs> She grew this leaf in the meantime, and now she's working on her second leaf, which is a beautiful sight. I love these complex Phalaenopsis hybrids when they start on their leaves. I just love that moment. I don't know if you're with me on that. Let me know in the comments. But me and a new leaf peeking out, oh, it's just a happy, happy time. Moving one down the row is Phalaenopsis No ID, Walter. One of the most predictable Phalaenopsis that I have finished this leaf already extending nicely the second leaf thank you walter for just behaving beautifully since i transitioned him in my history i've had some serious issues trying to figure out complex phalaenopsis hybrids walter never gave me any issues went into leka and self-watering and boom took off and has never looked back one of the biggest Phalaenopsis that I have is my Bobalicious, but she is well worth her space on the shelf. And one day when the conditions are right again, I hope to have fabulous long spikes of pink big-lipped blooms. That is the plan. So she has finished this leaf already. It's quite the speed that she is growing at. And her second leaf is extending beautifully as well. I can see some brown spotting here that I'm kind of observing. Ah, I'm not so sure if that was too much light from a year ago. I don't know. Maybe also too cold. Now, I'm not a fan of cutting spikes off until the Phalaenopsis themselves have absorbed their spike. This one seems to be such a happy grower, it doesn't need to absorb the spike for nutrients, so it actually took on the old spike and bloomed on a branch for the season of 2022. I don't want that to happen anymore. I would like to give her the opportunity to either grow a new spike or just focus on roots. This has been a spike that is now two years old, so it's coming off again. Not something that I do as a general rule. This little fowl came to me as a mini fowl. It's called Maxi because it's small white blooms. Year by year, it's been working more on roots than it has actually on leaves. And it didn't bloom for me this year either. But this leaf has grown since the season started, the growing season for fowls after their supposed blooming. So pretty much this one has had a rest well, since last year, it hasn't grown any new leaves and it hasn't grown a spike. So I've been waiting for some activity here. I'm thinking that the root system is what she was focusing on. Happy days. New leaf right here. Another new cute leaf starting in the middle there. Baba is one of the OGs of my collection, a very reluctant root grower, but we have finally gotten this one established in Lekka and self-watering. It was a fight, and if I am going to name this one properly, it is Baba 3.0, because 1 and 2 did not make it. Yes, as I mentioned, I had difficulty transitioning Phalaenopsis from bark into Lekka and self-watering. For that reason, 3.0, and well, doing great, finally. This is her spent spike of the season, and I'm going to be cutting it off, going against my own principles, but I'm going to show you why. As we are heading into trying times, 
even though everything's been treated and these bodies are dead? Yup, spikes. If everything else is protected, will attract scale. So these bodies are dead because all the orchids on the table have been treated against thrips as well. Yeah, because, you know, they're all in that vicinity and against scale. It's been a busy 48 hours with my Phalaenopsis, but I've thoroughly enjoyed the process. And that is the reason if you see in the reflection any weird spotting and marks on the leaves, that is the treatment against thrips. I used my insecticide again. But we're not done yet, so if you're still with me, let's move on and I'll show you the others. And while I was moving the other ones around, I saw that Walter had a dead body at the base. And I was pretty sure it was a dead body, but <laughs> I wanted to be 100% sure, so I removed it. Incredible! But that is why it takes me a long time to clear an orchid for indoor living after doing pest treatments. The treatment itself is not the issue. It is what I have to look out for. Did it work? Do I have to reapply, etc.? That is why, yep, when I say 24 to 48 hours, it just means that they are in my line of vision and I keep going back and back just to double check, triple check, and make sure that nothing is reoccurring. Aurora 3.0, yep, 3.0. Also, because I lost one predecessor, I actually thought I had lost two predecessors of Aurora 3.0, but actually, I still have 2.0, which is wonderful because this orchid is beautifully fragrant. And this poor little darling was watered with ice, so we had some issues with the velamen at the surface of the pot before I transitioned her into self-watering, and oh, Baby, she's doing great. Bloomed again for me. Never objected to the Lekka self-watering. I did crack the code of which I'm super, super pleased. This is her first leaf of the season. And bang, right afterwards, she brings out a second one. A wonderful orchid. Again, that fragrance. It is the sweetest, most potent, delicate, but divine aroma that really fills a room, but it is not overbearing. It is elegant. So, so nice. I found the 3.0 simply by standing in the garden center in the orchid section. I could smell her and I knew immediately she's here. And then all I needed to do was go around the tables and find her. Her fragrance is that intense. Imagine a big airy space, a garden center, and you can smell that fragrance. It's something I never forgot when I thought I lost my other two and I just was always on the smell out for her. <laughs> and here she is doing great. Yeah, very, very pleased. Have to step back a notch for Harlequin. I have some images to show you, but before I do that, this is the first leaf of the season and Harlequin is working on the second leaf. Oh, beautiful. Now, last year's leaf, the first one was wonderful, beautiful, long. That's the length Harlequin should have its leaves. This one here, the second one, didn't grow that long because, boom, she started spiking. Whether I will achieve this length of leaf or not, I do not care, honestly. If I never achieve this length of leaf on this orchid again, it won't phase me one bit. Actually, she will be doing me a favor because look at the size of it. Real estate is precious. <laughs> so if she sticks to smaller leaves, I'm quite fine with that. The blooms are still big and beautiful. That's all that really matters. And the orchid is doing well. Now, let me tell you what happened with her in the past months. I was doing a cleanup prior to what I'm doing now. And I just took the old spike off without cutting it and pulled it off. And shock horror, <laughs> it was an old and dry spike, but shock horror, it left a gaping hole in the stem. And I'm like, oh, what have you done? It was like a cave. And we know monopodials and holes in stems, right? Anyway, I shoved dragon's blood in there as quickly as possible. And then I just hoped for the best that I didn't open a massive wound, even though the spike was all woody and dry. I had never, ever seen anything like this, but a massive gaping hole. Anyway, having brought the orchid out, she was also exposed to some rain. And then the other day I looked at that hole just to double check that there's no issues. And then I saw a root growing in there. And of course the peeling started and hey, I found another root. So Harlequin is in active root growth, which is also fabulous. Very happy to see that. Recently staked because yeah, she was leaning way over. I needed to preempt what could have been a horrific disaster. <laughs> 
And here's my no ID, I call her sweetheart. She has the potential to be as big as Harlequin, but goodness me, I'm okay again with stunted leaves like this. It's not like I'm not fertilizing the orchids so that they grow small. It's just, you know, my climate temperatures conditions are not going to permit them growing long leaves before they start to spike. But this one was also restaked and repositioned in the pot. And you're probably thinking, well, she's really way high out of the pot. And that is true. I was doing three orchids that day. And I thought, if I cut the stem now, I'm going to have to stop everything for that cut to callus over. I was running out of time, so that is why I never cut her stem. Maybe a project for 2023. But she's doing fine, finally, and finally working on her first leaf. A little bit of a slow poke, little lazy bones is my little sweetheart. And here is beautiful lemon meringue. Did bloom for me this year, woohoo! Didn't bloom for me last year, boo! But you see, she's coming around. She's coming around. That's all I'm asking of my orchids. Just, you know, eventually get your mojo and, you know, we'll work together here. So Lemon Meringue has her mojo back, bloomed beautifully. I was very happy to see those lime green blooms again. And she was also repositioned this year and finished her first leaf right here, a little bit thinner than previously. Again, I'm totally fine with that. I'm just grateful that these orchids are alive. And here's her second leaf of the season, already looking a little bit wider. You do you, boo, just live. The other day I noticed that the new route that she had started was not going down in the media, despite the rain, despite all the soaks I've been giving them to encourage roots to go down into the pot. We had just repositioned this orchid and potted up all her aerial roots to make shelf space. So what I did, with the risk of cracking the root, I put that aerial root into the pot and yes, of course, I cracked it and then I just hope for the best that the velamen would just callus over a little bit. Seeing as the root is an active growth, we shall wait and see if I was successful. This orchid is established. I don't think cracking a root and damaging a root tip is going to make that big of a difference. Famous last words. <laughs> but there's more. Let me go get them. This is Maximilian did not bloom for me the last bloom season. I was a little bit concerned this orchid was not gonna make it to see it recover. Also because she started absorbing the lower leaf and yeah, I was very, very concerned, but we are in the process of recovery. This is her first leaf of the season. I am super happy to see this leaf. You cannot imagine. And even if it only grows small, Whatever the issue was, the orchid is now back in active growth. I've even got new roots coming. So Maximilian is showing me recovery and progress. And I hope I have enough time left so that the orchid can get strength before you know what happens. And then hopefully have her around come spring 2023. Just want to finish up with updates on not complex hybrids. I do have two that are actually named properly. This is Phalaenopsis Hot Kiss. Buds blasted early this season. No problem. The orchid isn't struggling. I have as yet to see a new leaf. She's starting to absorb the leaf in the back here, which is a little bit concerning because if this one goes, she'll only have three leaves left. She was never a prolific leaf grower. The more foliage that this orchid has, the more it can actually pick up on light, simply because my light levels are gonna be very, very low. So we need a lot of foliage to compensate for that by the time she's gonna need it. And there is no active root growth either. So la la la, tentative, tentative, positive thinking. <laughs> And to wrap this up, an update on my mini mark, recently repotted, transitioned into Lekka and self-watering. I am losing the seedling leaves in the back. Here's the first one. And the second one is also showing signs it's gonna go. Not a problem with that at all. I saw thrips and I'm telling you, I saw them. They are just gross. They look gross, little like little black wormy things. I mean, if you think mosquito larvae, but you take them down a tenth thing. And I was like, H-E, double hockey sticks, no way. She's also been treated. I haven't seen thrips since that treatment, but I've done it twice. <laughs> this is the leaf that was happening while she was being transitioned and it's all working out beautifully. We've got continuity in the leaf structure now that she has her mojo in the pot. And let me tell you something. Her second leaf is already underway. This is awesome. So pleased to see this. Even if this leaf stays smaller, whatever, just live. And now you can see why I said in the beginning, it's probably a reoccurring concept. Just live. That is all I ask. So 
What I've been doing, apart from pest treatment, giving them a once over, they have been soaked with calcium and magnesium at 300 parts per million, 24 hours, drained, flushed, and then 300 parts per million of fertilizer. A week after the CalMag treatment, whether they had absorbed the reservoir of fertilizer or not, I soaked with calcium nitrate only at 300 parts per million, 24 hours, flushed them. That is what you see them in right now, 300 parts per million of fertilizer. And the reason I can be so aggressive with it right now is because they're getting a lot, a lot of light to match the amount of nutrients I'm putting into them. When the lower temperatures come, there will only be water. I will be tidying them over depending on what light levels happen. This is my fall care. While the temperatures are still nice, above 18 degrees Celsius at night, they are outside. When it's not overcast, the patio gets shuffled around on the daily to accommodate these guys so that their leaves don't get burnt. By late afternoon, they're all on the east side for the night. So what you see here now is Phalaenopsis Central. <laughs> I have just added my complex hybrid collection to what I'm dealing with with the summer bloomers, but at least they're on the floor. I don't have to shuffle them around. These guys are now my main focus. And I can tell you, I am thoroughly enjoying the process because I very, very rarely work with my Phalaenopsis during the growing season while it's hot. They are sort of in a resting period from, let's say, June all the way up to the beginning of September, in my case. So for three months, it's just, well, you know, they need water and la di -dan. Now I can fuss over them and I am enjoying it without having to risk anything if you've watched this far, thank you very, very much. That is the fall update of my complex Phalaenopsis hybrids. And we'll have a look at them and see how they're doing late spring 2023 because, yeah, anxious times ahead. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for being here. I hope you have a beautiful day. On one condition, though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.